Thank you. Good morning. Uh, once again, I am proud to uh, lead off the second track of the Hope Conference. Uh, this is because of my roots as a phone freak and the roots of 2600 Magazine, host of this conference as a phone freak newsletter back in 1984 when they started out, just as I was dropping the ball on tap, but that's a whole other story. Uh, my talk this morning is on the future of freaking. Bring the laptop up. Can we bring the other microphone up, please? Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So, first off, um, I like to work with web pages, not apps. Um, I'm looking at h.cheshirecatalyst.com, which is a link to my schedule for this conference. This QR code will get you there as well. And if you click on Friday's schedule, there you are. Now, if you're doing this on your mobile phone, you'll have the times at the top. If you are on an older phone with one of those five-way navigators, you can navigate to the time of day you want, click on that, and it'll take you right to where the, uh, the talks are. Um, since I don't like uh, PowerPoint myself, again, my talk is also a web page. CheshireCatalyst.com slash future, spelled with a P-H. P-H-U-T-U-R-E. Uh, Basically, what is phone freaking? Well, back in the day, what phone freaking really is is exploring the network. Back then, there was a network worth exploring because the Bell System did not want you to know very much about it. It was their proprietary network, and they were the ones in control. If you were at home and just had a telephone set, um, you were interested in exploring this because this was your access to the world. Um, the world came to you through television. That was a one-way medium. Uh, you saw Leave it to Beaver and uh, the Nelson family, and, um, but you wanted to go out into the world yourself. And there was that one little box with a dial on it that could get you anywhere you wanted to go. Unfortunately, if you went there, it was very expensive. Long distance calling was, uh, cost a lot. But there were those who were exploring the network. Uh, they found a publication, um, Bell System Journal, and in it were the secrets of the Bell System the multi-frequency tones that would uh, place long-distance calls. Now, remember, they came up with touch tones. Uh, your touch tone dial put out a certain set of frequencies that uh, would place telephone calls for you. Numbers came into the incoming register. When it collected enough, it then placed the call for you. If you asked the operator to place the call for you, her touch tone dial put out a different set of frequencies that directly controlled the long lines network. The blue box duplicated the operator's frequencies. Uh, folks like Captain Crunch, of course, took gross advantage of this sort of thing and placed calls around the world to the payphone next to them and uh, would hear the 15-second delay it took for the hello to come all the way around and go hello back at them from the next phone. Much fun. Also, there was a, a fellow, Joe Ingressia, uh, who could whistle multi-frequency tones. Uh, he uh, later went on to rename himself as Joy Bubbles and actually legally changed his name to Joy Bubbles. Uh, there is now a documentary movie that has been made about him. And um, through the uh, Kickstarter campaign, I've thrown in 15 bucks just to get my name on the uh, credits of the movie. And uh, it is out there. I was hoping it would be here at the conference this weekend, but I haven't heard a thing about that, so I don't know that it is. Um, now, blue box tones told the switch where to route the call. To do that, you needed a blue box. Well, there are apps for such things these days. Well, I don't believe in apps much. Um, other people do. And Phone Losers Blue Box app is available for Apple and for Android. And the trick is that you then need to go someplace to use it. So let's see. ProjectMF.org has set up an asterisk box. Now, asterisk is an interesting device. Mark Spencer of Huntsville, Alabama uh, had a little Linux shop. And, uh, well, any small business, what's one thing they need is a business telephone or business telephone system. You start pressing those things, you find they're expensive. Well, he had a bunch of old PCs gathering dust in his back storage room, and he's a Linux developer. What the heck? He'd design his own, and he did. It's called Asterisk, and I highly recommend it. Unfortunately, you also need a couple of circuit boards to play with it. 
We need one circuit board that takes the line in from the telephone company, or you can go out through uh, the internet, uh, just uh, buying a, a SIP line. Uh, we'll get to that. Uh, and you need a, a circuit card that you connect uh, with RJ11 jacks on it that you plug your telephones into. Uh, or Ethernet jacks, you can have uh, business telephones of the modern era that are Ethernet equipped, that are VOIP ready, voice over internet protocol. Um, now, for Project MF, you've got uh, the blue box, they give you some explanations here, but around here we know about blue boxes. And if you don't, you can find out. Uh, Wikipedia, uh, just go through Project MF, it'll give you a whole bunch of information on this. So we're going to control W and drop this page now, come back. Um, oh, currently boxable numbers. This is also on the Project MF, off the Project MF page, and it's, there's lots of stuff that you can get to. Um, you'll notice in this page uh, about the future of phone freaking, I use target equals to underscore blank, so that every link on this page comes up in a new tab. Um, and then when you want to go back, you can just tab back or control W to drop the tab and come back this way. I find it much easier than having pages go to the same tab you're in and then you lose your place and you try and back up and you get lost. So this is uh, how I like to do web pages. Um, in the modern era, Skype is the gold standard for VOIP phone systems. Now Skype was developed in Europe. Why is that a good thing? Well, first off, it was long before Microsoft bought them, which is a very good thing. Uh, but because of they're in Europe, they had to use international standards. The ITU, International Telecommunications Union, based in Geneva, Switzerland, actually, uh, they don't call them standards. They call them recommendations. Why is that? There they are in Geneva, Switzerland. They are dictating how a network should be set up to sovereign nations. Uh, the post office runs uh, telephone companies in most other countries outside the US and uh, post offices are run by the countries themselves, and you don't tell a sovereign nation what to do. You simply make, quote, recommendations, close quote. That's the diplom diplomatic way of going about things, and that's how things are set up in the international world. Um, when you're in Europe, you're practically crossing somebody else's border every 50 miles or so, at least it seems like that, and so you need these international standards for when you cross borders. Um, now, I got Firefox to accept the tell tag. What is a tell tag? Uh, let's see, you're familiar with the mail to tag, mail to colon mumble at guppy.com, question mark, subject equals, this is the subject, close quote. And um, by the way, if you look at how I've got things set up in here, uh, when you copy the email address, I think it just gives you the email address, let's see paste. Uh, oh, that's something else. Okay. It's not doing what I want, of course. It's a live demo, so it does that. But um, this is an article I wrote uh, and published in 2600 Magazine on how I got Skype to accept uh, the tell tag in Firefox. And funny thing, Firefox now, if you click on a telephone number, will bring up Skype. Uh, I think they only get a consulting fee. I'm not certain. Uh, but I haven't pursued that. Uh, Control W and drop that. The real future of interconnecting phones and VOIP, voice over internet protocol, is web RTC, web real-time communications. This is the Wikipedia page here. This is where you can start on learning about this sort of thing. Um, support is from Microsoft Edge, Google Chrome, Firefox, Opera. Uh, these are all supporting web RTC. This is how you're going to be able to uh, place phone calls from websites. Uh, also sending SMS text messages, SMS, short message system. Um, I have a nasty habit of trying to define my acronyms as I come across them. If I forget to do that, please call out and ask me what the acronym is. Um, I like linking to Wikipedia pages because they have further links to other places. The whole reason the web is out there is to share the knowledge. That's where I come from. That's how I get into the most trouble. <laughs> I like it like that. Uh, let's see. WebRTC APIs, Applications Programming Interfaces. Um, all this stuff is out here. 
Simply follow the links, keep on learning, play with this stuff. This is the way the future is going to be going. Um, the PSTN, the Public Switch Telephone Network, is what we're all used to using and what we've all explored in the past with our blue boxes. And uh, the uh, project mf.org will let you play as if you were back in the day when blue boxes used to work. Um, they don't work anymore. The entire network has, is not using that signaling system anymore. But um, it's fun to play with. And the folks at MF, uh, projectmf.org have set up an asterisk box that accepts the multi-frequency tones, the MF tones, the blue box tones, so that you can play around. They have their own list of uh, clickable uh, numbers that you can play with on MF. And um, for those who have come up to me over the years and said, how do I become a phone freak? This is how you do it. Go play on Project MF and learn how the network used to work. But then keep exploring because the network is changing. The, the network is interfacing with VOIP. Uh, you need to buy a line from a phone company or an internet provider, which will uh, give you T1 service. A T1 line would give you about 23 different uh, lines into your PBX in the old days. And these days, they are virtual lines coming in as IP, Internet Protocol. And WebRTC is interfacing with that stuff. That's where the future is going. That's where you need to go. Uh, there is a real-time web solution conference coming up August 1 to 4 in New York City. You guys that live here are, are fortunate because this conference is right here. Um, if you go to uh, webrtcexpo.com slash east, um, this will bring you up into the, uh, their website. There's a register today button, and I believe if you register for the expo hall only, that will be a free pass. The expo hall will get you into all sorts of things, uh, people giving away all sorts of information, and the stuff you want to learn. Now, I've got down here dummies guides, because one company, Sonus, Sonus.net, uh, provides uh, the old dummies guides, the dummies guide to whatever, and in this case, uh, in their learning center, there are their dummies guides. And they have a deal with uh, John Wiley Company that produces the dummies books. And you can download ebooks of these dummies guides for uh, VOIP for SIP, Session Interface Protocol. Two years ago when I was here, I headed a session called, Are You Ready to Sip the Kool-Aid? Hoping that I could uh, get uh, a bunch of you people into SIP protocols, Session Interface Protocol, which is how you set up telephone calls using VOIP. Uh, it's getting a little more sophisticated now using WebRTC. And hopefully, you know, here are the dummies books. WebRTC for dummies, software-defined networking for dummies, SIP trunking for dummies. That's a really good one to look at. Um, diameter signaling for dummies. I'll have to check that one out myself. All of these dummies books, I hate the title that say that they are for dummies. They are not for dummies. They are for people who want to learn. Um, I don't call those people dummies. Uh, the fact that it's marketable, that's a whole other topic. Uh, various white papers that Sonus has available for you to download as well, brochures. And of course, the brochures will be for their own products, which are business telephones that use uh, asterisk and over Ethernet. And all this stuff is available to you if you just uh, bring up the web, find the links, create your own links. Um, let's see, over here in my Notepad++, I've got uh, an area called Tent there on the bottom of the page. Uh, oh, hang on. That's the index future. We can list a new one. HTTP colon slash slash 2600.com. Uh, 2600.com. End tag. File, save, over to the FileZilla. Hit enter to send it over. And of course, there's already one on the website. 
So it has to stop and ask, do I really want to overwrite it? However, I haven't used this network access in a while, so we need to refresh the network access. And there it goes, connection established now, waiting for welcome message, blah, blah, blah. And now, do I really want to overwrite it? Yes, I do. Transfer is finished. Control R to refresh. And, hmm, it should have shown. Let's make sure I save it in the right directory. Always a problem with me. Hope XI, file name is future, save. Already exists, do I want to replace it? Yes. And send it again, just to be sure. Hope XI. And refresh. And of course, it's not working, is it? Uh, oh, that's because I'm not in the right directory. Hope XI slash. All right. H dot Cheshire. And now, hmm, still not showing. I apologize, but that's how it's supposed to work. And that's because a space href equals that going to that with the close anchor. Say again? When you transferred the file of FileZilla, there was an error message in the bottom right corner. Ah, thank you. There was an error message apparently. And we're going to try transferring it again. Target already exists, yes. So overwrite it. Target exists, yes. And actually, let's try doing this. Going up a level to the Cheshire directory, future.html, and hmm, thank you. How could not be transferred? Ah, transfer is finished, but. Transferred in one second. That one transferred properly. So now it should be over in the main Cheshire directory. But it's not. I'll deal with that later and get that up there. But um, this is it. Uh, I just used Notepad to create my web pages because all the web pages is simply text, which then calls on various uh, images and what have you. I don't like Flash. I think that for the most part, it's eye candy and wastes the bandwidth. Uh, back in the day when people had little Nokia phones and were trying to get information on them, um, they couldn't see Flash things. Um, these days with modern cell phones, the touch screens and what have you, a lot of things come through a lot easier and faster and what have you. But um, I still think there are probably some people out there with uh, dial-ups at home. Uh, AOL.com is still out there. People are still using it because some people can't afford the faster internet. Um, and my thing is to share the knowledge and make it useful. Uh, that's what I do. So, um, from here, it's about going out and exploring. So, uh, I leave it to you folks to go out and learn how to do more things. Any questions? Yes. yes. The WebRTC conference, will that be streamed? Ah, good question. Will the WebRTC conference be streamed? Because I am really into that right now and really uh -huh. want to learn about it. Okay, well, let's. One more thing I want to say. If anybody wants a, a signed, uh, a Nautabox signed by the Captain Crunch, come see me. I'll, I'm selling a Nautabox. Uh, Anonymity in a box. John Draper, Captain Crunch has just announced that he is selling Anana boxes, and uh, please see him after the talk. Uh, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be able to sell them probably in the afternoon when I get an outbreak if I'm 
So, uh, yeah, see John later in the day. And uh, we will be around the conference all weekend. John, very good to see you. And let's see, so the WebRTC conference, will that be streamed? Um, good question. News and media, newsroom, social chatter. Uh, we could send a request in and find out, but um, we wouldn't get an answer today, I'm sure. Any other questions? Where are the microphones? Yeah, and where is the uh, microphone questions? Yeah. Center aisle up front is a microphone for questions, so we can get this on our web stream. And uh, thank you for bringing up the house lights. I can finally see people out here. Oh. Okay, well, thank you very much. And uh, I'll be around after the talk. And enjoy the conference.